the 1840s to the 1850s, Texas' population grew significantly. According to the 1840 census, about 70,000 people lived in Texas. Many settlers came in search of land and new opportunities, including the Morris family. David Morris was born on January 18, 1827 in South Carolina. His father, Charles, and older brothers, Eli, Reuben, and Thomas, made the journey to Texas to scout the area in the late 1830s. They found an area south of the Sulphur River that would be their new home. So when David was 13, he traveled with his family and their slaves from South Carolina to Texas. This was a long trip, almost a thousand miles, which was done by ox cart and wagon train in the spring of 1840. David grew up on his parents' land, which they had named Sweet Springs. Meanwhile, in Arkansas, Rachel Perry Godbold entered the world. She was born on November 23, 1830. Not much is known about her childhood or how she met David, but she did write in a diary. One reoccurring topic in her diary was her poor health. David and Rachel got married in Arkansas on February 6, 1855. Rachel's diary speaks of the two going on adventures. One of these adventures involves a couple taking a boat ride to Shreveport down to New Orleans. At one point in the diary, Rachel mentions that they sailed across the East Coast to New York. In the same year, David decided to build a plantation house with Rachel south of the Sulphur River. The house is 2,646 square feet with more than 2,000 acres surrounding it. The land ranged from Forest Home Community across the Sulphur River to Harrison Chapel near Redwater off of US 67. The newlyweds were excited to construct their new home. The exterior of the house follows the similarities of a Greek Revival architectural style. This style blossomed between the 1825 through 1869 era. During this revival period, many of the houses were built from wood and painted white. The front door leads off to a portico or an open porch, which is supported by old and plain Doric style columns. Above the columns crowns, there is a low pitched triangular pediment gable. The Moore's house also features six over six sash windows located on the second story on the left. The right side of the second story is the eight over eight Georgian style window. The windows on the entry level of the house are in the style nine over nine Georgian colonial. In the course of this time period, chimneys were not an important part of the design. They were usually narrow and plain and placed toward the back of the house. The interior of the Moore's house also follows the Greek Revival style. Because marble was too expensive, many of the rooms were painted white to imitate the marble effect. The wooden floors were coated with varnish. The Moore's home had a cast iron stove that was not only used for cooking, but also to heat the room. The iron stoves typically had six cooking plates, but the Moore's only had four. It required a lot of attention, which was usually the women's responsibility. It burned coal or wood and took at least four hours of work each day. Not only did the women use the stove to cook, but they also used a Dutch oven. The oven is pictured on the right side beside the fireplace. It has a thick walled cooking pot with a tight fitting lid. They were usually made of cast iron. The Moors probably used it to cook stews, casseroles, or even biscuits. For dessert, the Moors might have used the ice cream maker pictured on the left. To the left of the Dutch oven are tools used to clean the fireplace. The fireplaces in the Moors' house were influenced by the Rumford style. This style was smaller and shallower than older designs. It also kept more heat in the house. Another special feature was its narrow throat, which released smoke and air at an increased speed and it prevented backdrafts. There usually would be a fireplace inside a parlor, 
The parlor was one of the most important rooms of the house. It indicated that the Moors had a social status. The family probably decorated the room with their finest furniture and unique works of art. The Moors may have used their parlor to host formal receptions. The Moors' home had a root cellar, which is located under the house. It implied the owner of the house planned to stay for several years. The purpose of the root cellar was to store food away from the humid climate. The root cellar could even be used as a washroom. On February 3rd, 1864, David enlisted in the Confederate Army as a third corporal. When David fought in the Civil War, the letters were written so that the couple could keep in contact with each other. The contents of the letter range from plantation and personal matters. Rachel wrote about her illness, which caused David to become very concerned about her. In October 1860, David wrote from Cortland, I am so uneasy, not getting any letter. The last mail, I fear that you are sick and unable to write. The date of the last letter I received from you was 23rd of September, five days over a month. The mail comes tomorrow evening, and I shall go down and wait until it comes in. If I don't hear from you, I will start for Louisville and see about you and what is the matter. The letters also express how much the couple craved each other's company. In one letter, Rachel writes, When I get a letter from you, dear, I can set me down immediately to reply. I feel it does me much good, it seems, something like a conversation. You say, love, you wish you could receive a letter from me every night. I wish you could. After the war, David and Rachel spent many jubilant years together. Sadly, much to Rachel's dismay, David passed on January 18, 1892. Rachel lived 12 more years and passed in 1904. David and Rachel are both buried in the Rose Hill Cemetery in Texarkana, unlike the majority of their family, which were buried in the old Harrison Cemetery. There is a historical marker placed there to commemorate the chapel in the cemetery. The marker reads, founded 1840 by Republic of Texas pioneers Charles Moore, born 1776 and died 1852, and his wife, Mary Harrison. Extinct All Faiths Chapel, where circuit riders serve, was named for her parents of South Carolina. This five-acre family community burial lot contains about a hundred graves. Mary, Charles Moore, and Willis Whitaker were children of the American Revolution soldiers. Three of Moore's sons were Texas Rangers. Four men buried here had Republic of Texas head rights. The cemetery was restored in 1967, is now the only evidence of Mooresville, one mile north, and a post office from 1841 to 1866. Moore's Landing was on the Sulphur River. In 1904, Judge Glass purchased the house and surrounding area. He added a brick building to the property, which was used as a local store. At some point, water and electricity were added to the house. There was also a kitchen addition in the 1930s. The next owners, Arthur L. and Willie May Mason Treadway, bought the house in 1938. Their granddaughter, Laura P. V. Treadway, from Texarkana, Arkansas, inherited the property. She is the current owner. If you ever decide to take a drive going south on 59 from Texarkana, Turn right onto the old Texarkana Highway, then look to your right because you will see the Moorish Plantation still standing after 166 years.